70,000. I want you to try to imagine what 70,000 birds flapping their wings would look like in one place, or if they form some sort of a pattern in the sky. I want you to think about 70,000 soldiers in one place and what that looks like. 70,000 of a posse or an entourage of human beings that were with you moving in a singular direction and you being the focal point of their attention. Now think about this hadith from the Prophet The Prophet said that when someone goes to visit their brother or sister for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is ill, 70,000 angels accompany them to that visit, all praying and seeking forgiveness upon that person, for that person from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the way until the next day. So if you go to visit your brother or sister in the evening, the Prophet said 70,000 angels will accompany you upon that visit, all seeking forgiveness for you, praying upon you throughout that entire time, all the way until the next morning. So they don't even stop when you get to the, to the visit that you're supposed to get to. They stay with you till the next day. And if a person goes out in the morning to visit their sick brother or sister, 70,000 angels will accompany you throughout that entire visit, all the way until the evening, seeking forgiveness for you and praying upon you. Think about how incredible that is. And it doesn't stop there. The Prophet وسلم, said, وَكَانَ لَهُ خَرِيفٌ فِي الْجَنَّةِ and then that person will have a special garden for them promised in paradise. Now this is a mind-blowing hadith because an entire entourage of malaika, of angels that are far greater than human beings, far greater than the birds flapping their wings, all seeking forgiveness for you and praying upon you. How do we understand this incredible reward and what it means? Well, for one, you'll find people this day and age that give charity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You'll find people doing voluntary fasting. You'll find people that pray Qiyam al-Lid. You'll find people that do various service initiatives like feeding the poor and things of that sort. How rare is it to find people that visit sick people for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not because they're a chaplain at a hospital, not because they're, they've been called as an imam or in some pastoral capacity to take care of someone, not because it's family, but just as a form of, of seeking reward from Allah, as a form of getting closer to Allah on a regular basis saying, I'm going to visit sick people for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first thing is how rare it is to find people that do that, communities or groups or organizations that do that as a religious habit, separated from all other things. And of course, connect that to what the Prophet Sallallahu has already said about a person that just goes to visit their brother or sister for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, for the sake of Allah and nothing else, visiting a sick person. The second thing of this is that if you remember previously we said that Allah has said that he is with the sick person, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when speaking about the hungry and the thirsty, Allah mentioned his reward having been with that person. And the number 70,000 is significant in that regard. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that every day, as he had seen on his journey of al-Isra wal miraj on his ascension, every day, 70,000 angels visit al-Bayt al-Ma'mur, which is, right above the Kaaba, the frequently visited home, and they make tawaf around that and they never return. 70,000 enter every single day as they visit the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or they visit the equivalent of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Kaaba that exists for us in the form of al-Bayt al-Ma'mur. And so some of the scholars connected it to that. It's, it's because the sick person has such a special position with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in those moments, so much so that it's like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with them. The reward is so incredible that 70,000 assigned angels would come to accompany you on that visit because of how special it actually is. And, you know, if you add that to the reward of someone who fasts, you add that to someone who's fasting in the month of Ramadan. You add that to someone who's giving charity and the reward of charity. You add that to just the reward of checking up on someone for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, particularly when someone needs it most when they're feeling ill. And you think about how incredible that reward is. And there's something else that's special about this, which is الجنة, that they have a special garden in Jannah. If you remember previously, Allah has promised that person who is ill 
that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes them, if they pass away as a result of that illness, they have a special garden in Jannah. And so just like when you make dua for your brother and sister, the angel says, Ameen wa laka bi mithrihi, Ameen, and for you as well. When you go and visit your brother and sister and you make dua for them and you fulfill that obligation, you're getting the same reward as they are getting inshallah ta'ala, which is a garden in paradise, the forgiveness for sins and the angels that are praying upon you and, and seeking forgiveness for you from the Lord of the worlds at that time.